Hi everyone, welcome back to another step one review for oncology high yield clinical presentations. So let's just start. First one is a patient that's CD15 and CD30 positive. They have an owl eye appearance and bilobe nuclei that are called Reed Sternberg cells. This is Hodgkin's lymphoma. Next is the most common subtype of Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's more common in females and there's bands of fibrosis. This is nodular sclerosis. Next is a child with a giant jaw mass. Translocation 814, small blue cells on histology. This is Burkitt's lymphoma. Remember, Burkitt's lymphoma is associated with the EBV virus. Next is translocation 1418, BCL2 activation, and lymphadenopathy that comes and goes. This is follicular lymphoma. BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic protein. Next is translocation 1114 and cyclin D mutation. This is mantle cell lymphoma. Next, this is translocation 1118, history of chronic inflammatory conditions like Sjogren's syndrome, H. pylori, and Hashimoto. This is marginal cell lymphoma. Next is an HIV or AIDS patient that gets an EBV infection. They have a single ring enhancing lesion in their brain. This is primary CNS lymphoma. Next is a patient from Tokyo, Africa, the Caribbean that gets lytic bone lesions and T cells are affected. This is adult T-cell lymphoma. This is associated with the HTLV1 virus. Next is a patient that presents with skin patches and plaques, atypical CD4 cells with cerebriform nuclei, and Poutre's microabscesses. This is called mycosis fungoides if it's limited to the skin. If, it's if it affects the skin and the blood, it's called Cesare syndrome. Next is an elder male with bone pain, hypercalcemia, low hemoglobin, high BUN creatinine, and the peripheral blood smear shows stacked red blood cells. This is multiple myeloma. You have to watch out for the IgG spike on the immunoglobulin electrophoresis. Next is a patient presenting with headaches, blurry vision, and finger pain when they go out in the cold. This is associated with an M spike. This is Waldenstrom's microglobinemia. Next is a patient that has an overproduction of paraproteins. They could have an IgM spike or an IgG spike but no clinical findings. This is called MGUS or monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Next is a patient who has cancer and radiation treatment. Cells have abnormal maturation. This is myelodysplastic syndrome. It occurs in patients that receive radiation for cancer treatment. Next is a child with painless enlarged lymph nodes and TDT positive cells. This is ALL. Remember ALL is lymphocytic, so there can be B cells or T cells. If it's TDT positive, CD3 and CD7 positive, it tends to be T cell related. If it's CD19, CD20 positive, it's B cell related. Next is an elder male with fatigue, low hemoglobin, a positive Coombs test, and smudged out cells on histology. This is CLL, also called SLL. Next is a male with an enlarged spleen, low red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelet counts, and positive trap. This is hairy cell leukemia. You have to watch out for the hairy cells that appear on histology. 
Next is translocation 1517. These people have an increased risk of DIC. And you treat it with all transretinoic acid. This is AML. Next is translocation 922, BCR, ABL. They have a low lab score and you treat it with a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. This is CML. Remember, the tyrosine kinase inhibitor is imatinib. Next is a patient that feels itchy after a shower. They have high right blood cells and low EPO. This is polycythemia vera. Remember, this is associated with a JAK stat mutation. Next, you have a patient that presents with bleeding and thromboses and a high platelet count. This is essential thrombostemia. Next is a patient that presents with bone marrow fibrosis and red blood cells that look like teardrops. This is myelofibrosis. The fibrosis of the bone marrow can lead to pancytopenia. Next, you have a patient that has a high LEP score. This patient has severe pneumonia. This is called leukemoid reaction. Next, you have a patient with a low LEP score, and they are being treated with imatinib. This is CML. Next, you have a child who has bone lesions, a skin rash, and recurrent ear infections. They have tennis racket shaped granules, and the cells are positive for S100 and CD1A. This is longer Han cell histiocytosis. And finally, you have a patient that recently received treatment for newly diagnosed leukemia. They are now presenting with elevated potassium, phosphorus, and uric acid, and a low calcium. This is tumor lysis syndrome. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. See you in the next video.